Phasers are one of the most versatile weapons in all of sci-fi, the quintessential death ray used in Star Trek. In this video, I will attempt to explain the physical nature of phasers and their tactical use on starships, which were mostly the weapon of the Federation but used widely by other factions in the Star Trek universe. Let's get the really hard part over with, the science of phasers. For most of Star Trek technical sources, Phaser is short for Phased Energy Rectification, which is mostly technobabble gibberish. Phasers differ from lasers in that they are particle weapons that carry a specific type of particle called a nadion that can disrupt matter, break it down, and essentially vaporize or disintegrate it. Phasers are said to be far more destructive than lasers, and Starship Phasers have the ability to decimate cities in seconds, or to blast half a continent away in short order. I've had to do some heavy reading into particle physics to try to figure out what phasers really could be in real science, but I haven't been very successful. They could be simple plasma beams directed by electromagnetic fields. The nature of nadion particles per the TNG technical manual is very interesting and stated to have the ability to free the nuclear force of atoms. This would mean, of course, that every successful phaser impact would cause a nuclear explosion of sorts which doesn't seem to be the case from what we observed on screen. It's also possible that nadions simply change the nature or slightly alter the strength of the nuclear force. But phasers are not crude weapons in this way. They hit and destroy hulls of ships without a huge explosion. It's more likely that the nadions disrupt the electrons that form the hard covalent bonds in metals or solid objects which separates the molecules and cause them to shift into a gaseous state. In other words, phasers literally vaporize things. Now these nadions seem to have the ability to spread into solid matter in a very controlled way and can vaporize very specific parts of an object. Perhaps this is where all the phaser frequency tunings come into play and give phasers their ability to surgically destroy subsystems such as enemy ships, weapons, engines, and sensors, etc. As we have seen on screen, phasers can be fired in beams, bursts, or bolts. I'll take this opportunity to clarify that all you nerds that called me out on my last video when I said that the Defiant fires phasers in a way that we'd never seen before, that's in the next generation era, not in the motion picture or old series era. The TNG era phasers were almost always portrayed as beams until the Defiant came along. This tells me that phasers do indeed differ from lasers. Phaser emitters can be more easily compared to a nozzle on your garden hose, which can fire short bursts, pulses, or a continuous stream. And like the water bursts, they can usually, and I do want to stress usually, be seen traveling away from the ship with the naked eye, unlike a laser, which has an instantaneous travel time to the target. So there is just one huge problem. Starship combat in Star Trek is often said to be fought at ranges of thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of kilometers. If a phaser, among other weapons, is traveling so slowly that it can be seen with the naked eye, it would take ages to actually reach the target at that range. This is why, if you can see a phaser beam or bolt traveling, it is most likely to be firing at a relatively short range, on the order of tens of kilometers, not thousands. Occasionally we see phasers fire what appears to be an instantaneous beam, but this is rare. I would speculate that perhaps there are different modes of fire, a long range mode and a short range mode, where perhaps in the long range mode, the beam is more instantaneous like a laser and it requires more energy to fire with a sustained beam or to inflict any kind of real damage. In other words, it's more efficient to fire phasers as close to the target as possible to inflict maximum damage with a more powerful but slower phaser shot. And although it is true that phaser range by the TNG era is stated to be 300,000 kilometers, let's keep in mind how far this is. The Earth's diameter is just short of 13,000 kilometers. This means that a phaser range is about 23 Earth lengths. I mean, I could find this believable, but there is the pesky issue of optical targeting at that range. 300,000 kilometers is actually how far light can travel in one second, or one light second. This means that anything you target at that range, you'll be seeing its position a second prior. 
If the target has moved within that second or changed trajectory, the likelihood of hitting it is very diminished. Perhaps the targeting systems at such range use superluminal sensors to achieve an instantaneous target lock. Indeed, phasers have been shown to miss quite a bit, perhaps due to this reason. Phasers are very complex weapons that are also used as tools for non-combat applications. Their versatility fits the Federation way of thinking. They're not blunt instruments of destruction like disruptors, plasma torpedoes, or even photon torpedoes, but a sophisticated weapon for a civilized culture that frequently finds nonviolent uses for them. Well, that's all I have for phasers. Within the next two or three videos, I will be covering quantum torpedoes. Stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching Starship Cruise.